Hi everyone, it's John. Um, going to try to be a little bit better about posting regular reviews. Um, maybe try to get one up every Tuesday or so. So this is going to be the third Tuesday in a row that I've actually been able to keep my word. I wanted to talk about a brand that probably gets a little bit of attention, but <clears throat> one of the few um, I should say one of the many in the line that doesn't really get talked about a lot. So the the brand is um, Histoire de Parfum, and I want to talk about 1876. Um, so mostly when you hear about Histoire de Parfum, you hear about Ombre 114, or you hear about Casanova, which I think is 1740, or, um, no, 1725, or you hear about Marquis de Sade, which is 1740, I think. Um, I've tried all those. The, the The amber is nice, but this, and I think I've already reviewed uh, Patchouli Noir, or Noir Patchouli, on my channel. If I haven't, I'll, I'll post it sometime. But this is really in my top two of the, uh, at least the ones that they send out in their sample set. So I wanted to definitely talk about it. Histoire de Parfum is inspired by a famous Dutch exotic dancer uh, by the name of Mata Hari, who spied for Germany during World War I. And it was introduced in 2001. I couldn't find a perfumer, but um, looked a couple of different places online. You can usually find something like that for this, but couldn't find it. So, quick uh, quick breakdown of notes. Top notes of bergamot, orange, lychee. Um, uh, middle notes of... Just a second. Um, Maybe it doesn't have middle notes, or I didn't write them down. Rose, base notes of rose, iris. Uh, middle notes of rose, iris, violet, caraway, cinnamon, cumin. And base notes of vetiver, guayac, wood, sandalwood, musk, and vanilla. I wrote base notes and then bottom notes instead of middle notes and then bottom notes. Sorry. So, 1876 opens with as with many things do, sort of a very fleeting citrus note. Bergamot, I guess. Um, but the the most interesting part of the whole thing for me is the use of lychee in this perfume. It's it's really, really smart and really sort of a stroke of genius, I think. Um, the lychee has this ingredient this chemical ingredient in it called um uh, cisrose oxide that has sort of like this sweetness it sort of reminds me of um like a sweet white wine like a Gewürztraminer or um, a riesling that pairs really nicely with the rose and the iris that are in sort of the floral heart of the perfume so the top provides a nice sort of bridge to the the middle of the fragrance um so instantly it starts to open up into, like I said, that floral iris powder, um, iris violet um, rose heart, with rose sort of playing uh, kind of the slightly more predominant role. Toward the middle and the base of 1876, I get something I've never quite smelled in anything ever before, and I don't know what combination of notes is doing this, but I get a cereal or a wheat germ um, or something bread-like in it. Um, it sounds really weird, but it, it kind of, not bakery sweet bread, but just the smell of like a cereal or a grain. It has the effect of adding this warmth and sort of comforting feeling to the whole thing. It sounds unusual. I'm not sure I'd really like it if I heard someone else describe it like that, but it kind of works. 
Um, most perfume hearts don't last very long in my skin before they go straight into a base, but this one lasts for, I don't mean to say the entire longevity, but the heart itself lasts for several hours before you actually get to the base. So if you like that sort of rose iris violet that can get a little bit powdery, but no, not excessive, um, this is really interesting stuff. So when you finally do get to the base, um, there's still that powderiness, which I'm guessing is from the rose, uh, sorry, the, the violet and the iris. But it's mixed with this really nice vanillic, um, labdenum rich amber. Um, it's kind of de rigueur, I guess, to say that something that has cumin listed in the notes smells like BO or smells like, you know, uh, a dirty, unwashed body or something. This apparently does have cumin, but I don't smell it. So it's not dirty at all. It might just be there to sort of um, add a little bit of skank to the floral notes, I guess. But this is not skanky at all. Um, I realize that the above description might sort of come off as matronly, especially with the powderiness and the floral notes and all of that stuff. But the overall impression um, is uh, probably leaning femme, I guess. But I think it's ultimately unisex. There's no reason why. I've worn this out in public several times, and there's no reason why. Um, a man couldn't wear this. I smell much, much more feminine things on men than this. Um, I'm generally not someone who gravitates towards traditionally perf uh, traditionally feminine perfumery. I'm not sure if this was really marketed towards women. Um, I think it's trying to be unisex too. But um, the, like I said, this use of lychee in this is um, along with a really really nice mix of buttery floral powdered iris and violet really sort of struck a chord with me it reminds me of bruno fazolari's uh, sirig if anyone's had the opportunity to try that it's actually discontinued from his house now um, or zoologist's civet if you've had a chance to try that it doesn't really remind me of Sirig and Civet in the fact that they have the same composition, but rather that they just remind me of big, bold, lush, assertive perfumes that were really common for women in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And these are just uh, three examples of, of what I like to think are sort of vintage throwbacks in the very best sense of the term. And there's just something really inviting about them, something um, both assertive and and warm um, and cozy at the same time. I don't know. Um, I, I've just always really loved big, you know, sort of floral vintage women's perfumes. I don't know why. It's not something I liked even a year or two ago, but I like them now. Um, because of its boldness and because of its presence, I think a lot of people would probably opt to wear this in the cooler months rather than uh, warmer months. The longevity sort of hits the spot for me at a perfect, you know, six or eight hours. And strikes a really nice balance between being close to the skin scent and sort of filling up an entire room. Uh, people will definitely smell you when you walk by, I think, but... Um, you're not going to make anyone gag. Price-wise, uh, as far as retail goes, um, this this 60 ml bottle will run you 105 if you choose to pay full retail for it. Um, of course, the the other uh, the four ounce option, the 120 ml, has the other half of the histoire or the the book, the story. Um, but you don't have to pay that. Um, so this would be retail at 105. I, I found this on eBay for about 55 bucks. So you can find it for roughly half retail if you look hard enough and if you're willing to wait for it. 
but when I found it for fifty one dollars, I had to sort of snatch that up. So if you've smelled other perfumes that utilize the note of bleachy, um, if you're not turned off by something that's a little bit uh, assertive, but also powdery. I know a lot of people don't do powder, uh, don't care for powder very much. I think this is something really nice. Um, it certainly deserves just as much, if not more, attention than other Estrada Parfum scents, like, like I said, Ombre 114, um, Casanova, which is 1725, or Marquis de Sade, which is 1740. Um, all three of which I think, in my humble opinion, happen to be inferior to 1876. Um, I also think, just as a side note, that 1876 does perhaps the best job in the entire collection. And when I say the entire collection, I mean just the ones that have uh, years associated with the dates. I'm not talking about the Umbrarum or the um, Rosam or the, the ones that are maybe slightly more expensive. Um, just the ones with the dates, you know, the Ernest Hemingway, the Casanova, the Marquis de Sade. Um, Georges Sand, uh, those. This really captures the subject of the perfume, the person with whom the perfume is associated, the best. When I smelled uh, Hemingway, the, which I believe is 1899, did not, I mean, I've read much of Hemingway's work. I know quite a bit about his life. Nothing about it said Hemingway to me. Um, nothing about Casanova said Casanova. Nothing about uh, the Marquis de Sade said anything about the Marquis de Sade. But this really sings Matahari. Um, something about what I would have imagined she was like is really captured in this perfume. And that's why I think it's, of course, it's ultimately about what it smells like, but it's also nice to know that they did such a good job at sort of creating a, um, a match between the subject and what I think the person might have worn themselves or been associated with. So that's my take on 1876. If any of that sounds interesting, let me know you smelled it before, um, drop a comment by and uh, let me know what you think about it. 1876 by Histoire de Parfum. Bye, guys.